just back home after uh, our first face-to-face -face class. Um, I've tried to, I'm, I'm actually in the process of editing the uh, video and the audio for those of you who are unable to attend or who are online students and never plan to attend. Um, I need to warn you, I did have a little bit of a technical glitch at the beginning for reasons un still not understood by me. I wasn't able to attach my computer to the screen. So I tried a number of workarounds with various amounts of success. So um, bits of the video might be a little bit choppy. Um, in fact, you'll probably see more slides than the people in the class were able to. Um, but I just wanted to give you the warning that that is what had happened. Uh, for those of you who are listening and not not actually watching um, basically uh, some of the narr narration won't follow the slides it's just worth noticing that um, because without the slides I don't remember what order it is I was going to talk about things um, as always uh, just work through the video or the audio depending on how you want to work and if you've got questions um, if you want to make comments uh, please do not hesitate to do that. There are discussion boards in Canvas for that purpose and you can always email me if you want to talk to me directly. Otherwise, enjoy. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I am Kath Nolan, Catherine Nolan. Feel free to call me Kath. Um, and I am your facilitator, um, guide, person to annoy you through this journey into contract law. Uh, some of you I already know, um, I've met you in either different subjects or because a number of people start this subject and then pull out along the way as you start with your four subjects and you decide that you're going to whittle down to three or two or one and um, I don't know, I seem to just, people just want to get extra calf so they just put me off for as long as they possibly can. That's the way I choose to see it. Um, I'm actually just going to start with some stuff without slides. Um, the slides are actually up in um, Canvas for those of you who want to follow along. Um, for those of you watching on the recording, hopefully this little device here is following me around and you can see me. So you can see that everybody else is behind. Hopefully it's recording the slides as I go at the moment. And then once you're actually doing an activity, I will get my slide pack from the cloud and try and bring it up and I'll try and sync it. That's the best I can come up with at the moment. I have no idea why this isn't working, but Rigid policy of absolute flexibility, we will get there. Um, before I do anything else, she says, make turning on her own clicker so the recording makes sense. Come on. Hello, are you there? Okay, maybe you're not. Oh, now it is. Um, I just want to um, do again what I did in our tutorial because everybody wasn't here. And I just want to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we stand, uh, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, the Woon, Woon Wurrung and Boon Wurrung language groups and acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging and pay particular respect to any Aboriginal people in this land. Uh, we're going to talk about, sorry, in this room. Well, land encompasses the room, right? But you know what I mean. Uh, we're going to talk about what will feel like really old cases where Contract law doesn't change a lot, so a lot of time we're going to be spending time in our crinoline skirts in the 18-somethings and the 19-somethings. I think today the most recent case we talk about is from 1977, and that will. there are some of you who won't have been alive in 1977. Uh, so... Um, you know, it kind of feels like we're dealing with an ancient set of case law, but I think it makes sense to actually remember that it's brand new compared to 20,000 years of civilization that went before that. Um, okay, so I have been um, online, had a tute with some of you. Um, and so I went through some of the expectations and things that I'm expecting in the classroom. One of the questions I asked was, is there something else that you would like on that list? Uh, I'm smiling because the immediate thing I think I would like on that list is tech that worked and that didn't start me out in a complete nervous panic. Um, but did anybody think of anything that is going to be useful for you in the environment that we're in that you would like to share. 
if you have and you're shy, firstly, don't be shy. But secondly, that's like saying don't sneeze. So come and talk to me if there is something. I think it's going to be a really disrupted semester. It already has been. Um, I think we are going to need to work on the basis it's more likely than not that classes will, face to face classes will stop at some point. Um, if they don't, that's awesome. Um, but I think we need to be prepared for that. And I think one of the ways that you can be prepared for that is thinking about how you're going to engage with the materials online, how you're going to engage with me and your other teachers online, but even more importantly, how you're going to work with your colleagues around the room. So today is a particularly important day for those of you who are in the room, because I think today is the day where you meet people, you get a sense of who they are so that you can actually send them a WhatsApp message or something and say, hey, have you read this? I don't get it. Um, because by the way, most of you won't get it, not first time round. Um, and then suddenly you will. And it's kind of, that's kind of one of the joys and the horrible things about teaching this class is I get a group of perfectly reasonable, normal human beings in the room and it, somewhere between three and six weeks, you start thinking like lawyers. And it's like, it's really sad because that will never, you never not get that back. Um, and you get this weird kind of logic that nobody else really seems to connect with. But actually, it's also a really joyful thing for me because I've been thinking like a lawyer for a really long time and I, you know, I'm, I quite enjoy it. Um, textbooks, just wanted to quickly mention those. Um, they are apparently available now for those of you who wish to buy them. Um, the readings in the materials, the, all the reconstituted uh, course notes, uh, the, they all relate back to those two textbooks. Um, there are some differences that we cover. Often the differences or the kind of more dramatic changes in the contract world um, happen once contracts are made and they're about reasons that contracts are undone or ways that damages are paid. So that's the stuff that you follow on in advance contract. By the way, those of you, is there anyone in the room who's doing advanced as well as fundamentals at the same time? Good. This is possibly the last year that that was even possible. I believe they're really nailed it down and we can have proper prerequisites. I'm reliably informed that advanced contract is a lot easier than fundamentals of contract. Um, that could be because I'm a shit teacher. Uh, it's more likely, I think, because um, this is a fundamental subject. There's a lot of stuff that you will do in this subject that will help you in a whole lot of other subjects, not just advanced contract law, about the way you think and the way that you unpack. And a lot of what we're doing in this subject is, it's a bit like getting a jigsaw puzzle and just throwing all the pieces on the table. And what we're doing in this subject is just organising it into the different colours and getting the corners and working out what the fundamentals are. We're not, and it's in advance that you will do a lot more piecing it together. We will do a bit of piecing it together. We're going to examine some of those pieces really, really carefully. We're going to examine the pieces that go to what a contract is uh, and what the elements of a contract are, which hilariously in the tute, there was one of them that I could not bring to mind at all um, and it just drove me insane. And then it was, it, it was actually quite funny. Does it, was anybody there? Does anybody know what one it was? Did you work out what it was? Certainty. Certainty, which is made up of completeness, which one would think if you have four elements to make them complete, you would remember what it was. But I just had a senior nervous moment. Um, and yeah, and I do that from time to time, um, partly because I'm old. No, I, actually, I'm not that old, but I'm possibly older than most, if not all of you. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is a lot of detail and I'm a practitioner. I'm not an academic. Uh, well, I don't identify as an academic. I'm technically an academic, but I identify as a pracademic. I've been in practice for 30 years and a couple of months. Um, and I've worked in law firms for three years before I was admitted. Uh, so again, I have, there's a lot of the stuff that you just carry with you. It becomes part of thinking like a lawyer. And 
it's been really good for me as a practitioner to come back and actually unpick all of the pieces again from time to time. Um, but yes, yeah, sometimes I don't carry them in my head. I will tell you right now, I don't remember case names. Often I will be saying, hmm, yeah, it was the case and yeah, remember there was the old lady and she, um, she fell over and blah, blah, blah. And I will tell you the story. Or Lord Muckety Muck was sitting in prison and he wanted his mate to go out and get him a pardon. Like I remember the stories and I remember the, uh, the points. And if I've done my prep within four or five hours beforehand, I will remember the case names as well. But if I did my prep the day before, right, chances are I will forget. Why am I saying this? Because you don't really need to remember the names of cases either. Your undergraduate degrees are finished now. It is no longer important that you are really good at regurgitating information. Um, that helps, but that is actually not what will get you the good marks. What gets you the good marks at a postgraduate level is being able to do stuff with the information. So remembering why we looked at a case or what it's about or what the facts are that will differentiate it from another case is what's important. So one of the great things about the textbooks is that they have, particularly the case book, has consolidated down the bits of the cases that are most important. Um, unlike modern legal drafters of today, most of your judges in the 1870s and even the 1970s um, really did like the sound of their own pen scratching. Uh, and so judgments tend to be long, they tend to be written in language that we are not familiar with and uh, they can be difficult to read, particularly when you don't see the point. So one of the reasons that I like to highly recommend those two textbooks is they've, those cases have been put together to accompany that text and they're there to illustrate the key points. Me, I find it easier to read the text first, in fact I would suggest you read the course notes first, then the text, then the cases. Um, but that's the way my brain works because it helps me to know what I'm looking for, know why I'm reading something. Tiny little note on um, the course materials. Um, we did, by we, I mean the entire Fundamentals of Contract Law team, you are looking at her, did a significant review of the materials, the course notes at the end of last year. We had a lot of feedback because the course notes were prepared, like they were just basically pages in Canvas. And it was, it was hard for me to get the data out of Canvas, but my guess was people weren't reading them. They hadn't been updated since they were first written in 2012, other than me going in and either fixing things I saw or adding in a couple of new cases or, shall we say, putting the emphasis on a different syllable if I thought that the way that it was had been put together didn't work. So I did, I spent a lot of time, at, anyway, at, at risk of talking about something I don't need to talk about, I ran out of that time. I finished it but it really severely needs a proofread. There is no doubt about that. I only did it on the screen. I have, to this day, never printed it out. Only yesterday when I was looking at it, I saw right in the middle of a word, it wasn't even in a sentence, open square bracket, check textbook reference, close square bracket, because the textbook was also changing and I needed to make sure the number of references were right. Um, I am poor, the university doesn't pay me for the upgrade, it doesn't pay you for this stuff, but I will pay in chocolate pretty much for every uh, typo or uh, thing that you can tell me that will help me improve it. Um, I, seriously, I will pay in chocolate per typo. Please feel free to be a smart ass. Okay, you can be as passive in your passive aggressive as you want to about the problems that you have with the case notes because I can't get any funding to get somebody else to do it and I reckon you guys, you got to read it, right? So if you give me a typo that I haven't already found, I will pay in chocolate and I will pay in booze to the person at the end of the semester who gives me the most. That goes for you online as well. All right, deal done. There is no slide that says that, by the way, just in case you were wondering. Um, because I suspect that if anybody finds out, I will be in trouble. Um, the next slide that you would see, which you can't see, so I will send it around, but I have sent around separately, is 
reading list. I just want to mention that again. I'm really excited about the reading list. It was a huge investment on my part. It's a huge investment for all of the academics who are putting them together. So those of you who've used it will, and because you're new, you probably won't realise how much of a step up improvement it is having the reading list. If you love it, it is absolutely in your interest to get academics to love it too because they will support it. Um, and that means that you will have it in future classes. Library's running a competition for students at the moment to make a little video of some sort saying how awesome or otherwise the le reading list is, how you use it, what you want to use it for. It's a $200 Coles Meyer voucher for the winner. Um, but yeah, I reckon if you've got some time to do that, do it. Um, even if you don't, have a look in the reading list and have a go at using it. Feel free to leave your comments, feel free to leave your suggestions about how it can be improved. Um, on that note, um, the library, because I am literally the first adopter of the reading list in the whole of the College of Business, I used it for a subject over summer, um, they're doing a little interview with me on Monday and they want to come in and film part of the class at the beginning, I think they just want background shots or something or other. Um, I haven't decided what to wear. If somebody can let me know what I should, that would be good. Um, but yeah, if you do not want to be seen on film, if there's some restraining order that means you shouldn't be getting a law degree, uh, if you could let me know in advance, I will make sure that you are pixelated or whatever. Um, you at home, don't need to worry about that. I don't know, I'm going to keep pointing at this camera thing and I have no idea if this little experiment is going to work or not. Um, you might have noticed I am a little bit of a geek and I like playing with tech. So, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about, oh, is contract law. So let's do some of that. Uh, firstly, any questions, concerns, frustrations? Yes, you're going to need to tell me your name because I'm going to try and learn them. My name is Michael. Hi, Michael. What do I see as the primary benefit of the way the reading list is constructed? Um, side note again, I'm probably going to repeat your questions because um, your voices won't show up on the recording. Uh, the primary benefit is, every, from my point of view, every minute that you spend studying, I want you to be doing productive stuff. And every minute that you spend searching for something is a minute that you're not reading it. So from your point of view, that's what I think is the primary benefit um, because basically everything in there, except for the one thing that they haven't digitised yet, which was reading for this week, everything you should be able to get it online. Secondly, if you do not wish to, cannot afford to um, or just are prepared to... Um, make the environment a better place, you may not wish to buy what are quite expensive textbooks. Great thing about our textbooks is you get to use them for at least two subjects and you will find you will refer back to them for other subjects as well because contract is a fundamental underpinning subject. Um, but that isn't always the case. So having the reading list forces academics to um, basically make sure that the materials are online. Now, particularly for students who are studying in distance, I think that's really important because you can't really walk into your local book barn or Dimmicks and pick up uh, Patterson and Duke or, oh, I can't remember, Duke's gone now, hasn't he? The, whoever the other one is, on contract law. So they're harder to get. Um, so they would be the primary benefits. Secondary benefits I haven't seen yet but I'm excited about is inside the reading list, if you have a question about a reading, you can share it with other people. Um, other students can respond and have a discussion. And for the reasons that I explained in the tute, if any of you looked at that, actually you learn more when you are doing something active than when you are being passive. So actually reading somebody else's question will help you think differently trying to answer it will actually put all of those skills in play. Um, but though also, then I see them as well. I can participate in that as well. Um, some of you, if you're like me and you just feel better when you've ticked something on a list, I don't know, I, today I literally wrote things on a list after I'd done them so I could tick them off because I was nervous about coming in here. Um, 
but you can actually tick off the things. You know what you've read, you know where you're up to. Um, the other thing is they're done by topic. So it gives, you, it's actually much easier to estimate how long it's going to take you to read because each topic, it tells you how many readings and how many pages that is. So there's some of the benefits that I can see. I'm hoping to learn more from you about what you see.